Texas outlaw rights, you need a forest podium, like you're the mayor of the forest. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. So you all thought that I wasn't gonna build this thing. It has a light. It just souped up. It's a souped up forest podium for the forest mayor. Thank you. Okay, so today question and answer is gonna start right now. Okay, I have a uh, good old white piece of paper. It is so damp out here, this thing feels like I just wiped my butt with it. Then I also got the cell phone with those questions. So I got a bunch of good questions and a lot of good answers for everybody out there. I'd like to start off by saying thank you to everybody who's like, oh, don't mind the trolls, don't mind the negative comments. It really doesn't affect me. I just like to share it with everybody because of the obnoxiousness of it. It's, people are insane. Okay, I don't want to knock my light over. All right, let's get started. This one has to do with the, what I just talked about. Do you ever get um, shut down? Today's gonna be a long day. I cannot get my words out. I think it's the podium. It's making me nervous. Hey Dan, do you ever just shut down everything exhausted by the critical mass assholes you wanna kill yourself for? What's a good lightweight sleeping pad for winter, 30 degrees and below? Um, I, I can't give you a good recommendation on that. I just started researching them a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna do a video in the future about sleeping pads like foam mats versus inflatables. I've been using an inflatable mat. It's like, um, I don't even know what the name of it is. It's supposed to like you could drag it behind a car or something. I'm sure somebody will know, leave in the comments below. Um, so once I get a little bit more detailed information about those and I, I'm more comfortable with field use of the few that I'm gonna purchase in the near future, I'll definitely get back to you because I do think it's a viable option if you don't want to make a bed of leaves. What's your favorite snack food when in the woods? <sighs> Probably like beef jerky if I'm like at camp. If I'm out there in a day like this, I just like a good protein bar. Like the Metrex protein or apple crisp or something. I love those things, super packable, ton of calories. I like those. I'm getting a lot of thumbs up during this video. Do you ever just shut down your phone, leave the family at home and go out camping? No YouTube or school related, just plain old camping? Yes, I don't get to do it as much as I used to do it, but we do have several different times here at our school property that me and the instructors and some of our other friends get together. We do a frozen butt hang, we do summer camp outs, and that's just like hanging out. Now, of course, yeah, I'm with my family, but that's part of the fun for me. Uh, to go out and hang out with everybody and do that. So uh, yeah, I do get to go out and do that. Just not as much as I would like. Why do you prefer a saber grind over a Scandi grind? Isn't a saber grind harder to sharpen? So yes, I do like a saber grind over a Scandi grind, which a saber grind like on the coal cracker knives are just really a high saber grind. Now the reason I personally like them a little bit more is just personal preference. I like, I feel like I can get better shavings with them because it is a finer cutting edge compared to the steepness of a Scandi grind. Now, a Scandi grind is way easier to sharpen for most individuals. A saber grind takes a little bit of finesse. You have to know a little bit more about sharpening because it's a little bit tougher to find that that op more open angle. But um, at the end of the day, you know, it comes down to your personal preference. What do you like? I do like that saber grind though, just because I, like I said, it's easier to sharpen. And I think I use it way more. Um, I play around with Scandi grinds and some of my knives and they're not bad. I just use that saber grind so much more. I'm more comfortable with it at this point. So it's sort of what I use. Kevin Bowen. So Kevin sent me this awesome package a while ago, all this awesome stuff in it. He sent me some beers. I did drink the Chimay. It was a good beer. I had them in the past. Um, I wouldn't say it's top of my list for beers, but it was enjoyable. And um, thanks for only sending one. That was a smart idea. You know, you drink one beer, you like it, and then all of a sudden you're looking for another one. You run to the beer store, they don't have that. And then you gotta settle for something else. Your taste buds are already, you get the point. You should have sent a couple beers. Thanks, Kevin. I thought there was a lot of day drinking involved in this question and answer. <laughs> there might be, it's very early right now. So normally I shoot this, Normally I shoot this video on Tuesdays, edit it out Wednesday, but today 
early morning Wednesday, I'm out here getting it done for you and for me because it makes me feel good to shoot this video. All right, I'm done with the paper. You littered, you littered, you're gonna die. I'll pick the paper up in two minutes, okay? A good amount of comments on last week's question and answer. Again, thank you for all the support for that. A lot of comments about all the knuckleheads that come on here. Again, I like to share that with people because I don't think people realize how crazy other people are at times. I think, yeah, you probably do. You probably do, but I like to share it with you just to reinforce the fact that people are nuts. Can you tell how soft or hard a ferrocerium rod is when you're looking to purchase one online? No, I don't, I mean, there's no scale that people measure that. You're probably gonna have to just buy the rod and bite the bullet and see when you get it in, if you like it or not. I can tell you, or I'm sure other people who run websites that sell survival type items like that, if they're out in the field and using the stuff and not just selling the stuff, we can tell you like the fair serum rods on our site are soft, they, you scrape a ton of material off them and they work really well. So if you can get that kind of input right from the source, you're good if you're getting like Amazon or something, unless somebody in the comments, but again, they could be just people sitting on their couch that bought the ferro rod, that are bushcraft experts, that have never yet struck the rod. Like if you're watching a video and somebody's knife is brand new and their gear is brand new and they're doing a gear review, you should probably click the video off. You probably, they probably didn't use that piece of gear. Just say. The chicken wing episode was absolutely awesome, and those chicken wings were good. If you didn't watch that, I'll put the link below. We cooked chicken wings. It was like negative five degrees out or something. It was super cold, but we had beer, and we had hot wings, and it was great. The campfire didn't even keep us warm. It was that cold. When going into an extreme remote area, what do you think about carrying a satellite phone? I think that's good. I have used satellite phones when I was on a show alone and they seem to work well. I mean, you gotta get reception, so if you're down in like a hollow or somewhere like that, especially my location where I was at, I had to like march up this hill every day to uh, send a call out on it. Um, we also had these GP, the yellow bricks they were called. They were like little units you could text on. Um, I would look at either one of those. So I guess if you type in yellow brick GPS, it'll come up, but that was cool because it's like a texting unit. I don't like to talk to people in general on the phone, so I'd rather way just rather text somebody than I'm dying in the woods. I wear liquid smoke as cologne. <laughs> that's great. See, that's what I'm talking about, and that's why I love you guys. Drink a beer, put on some liquid smoke, then get the ladies going. It just, it gets there. Oh, they want you. Who texted you at the beginning of this video and that iPhone has great photo and video quality? I don't think it's any of your business who was texting me. I don't even remember who was texting me. My phone dings all day with emails and texts and all kind of craziness. But I don't video, this is an iPhone. This is a DSLR camera. I just panicked because I looked and I didn't think I had the record button on and I was going already for a while. You don't like sports, what a waste of time. <laughs> Who wrote that? Fred S, come on, Fred. I don't, know, don't get into it. Maybe you're being a smart ass, which that's okay. Now I like you again, Fred. Up, down, left, right, what's your favorite direction? I guess right, I don't know, is that a trick question? That goes into the Blue Angel, and people are like, oh, 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 you're... I don't know what that is, and then I look it up. Who even drinks that unless you're, you don't have any testosterone in your body? Really? So, little experiment, I don't have the ingredients for a Blue Angel shot. Can you light it with a ferro rod? I don't know, I don't know, but I brought something that we can experiment with. And then I'm gonna do a second video on it because I'm just like, that's gonna be a cool video and people are gonna watch because people might not wanna watch question and answer. If they don't get the good content, let's just do, let's do what I'm talking about now. Here's what I'm gonna say. When I think about lighting shots like this, the problem's gonna be if you scrape the bear on and it doesn't scrape to get a spark, like you just get shavings, now you're drinking that. Not that I mind a little bit of ferrocerium in my system every so often. It's like, wham, it's like when it ignites inside. Mmm, you got it. All right, let's see if this works. Is this glass cracked? Okay. I like the fireproof stopper thing. Now this ain't no blue angel, but what I can say, better put this here. What I can say is that this should light. I mean, that flame should be hot enough to light this. Now, the Blue Angel shot people were talking about, I don't know, I had cream or something in it. Get a life. Okay, let's zoom in and light this thing up. All right, you crazy bushcrafters, are you ready? Let's uh, 
do a prep shot. Let's see. Is that lit? No, come on. That burning. It is burning. I don't know if you could tell. It's burning. Ha ha! Burn baby burn. So you can light this up easily. All right, so as you see, definitely lightable. Is it out? There's all those shavings inside there. Now, but what are you gonna do? What are you gonna waste it? You're gonna waste it. So you can light this. All right. I love the you kill the sapling dance. I, I mean, it's spreading like wildfire. If you go to any major club in any major city, they're doing that dance. Hey Dan, you should have an arm wrestling contest with the other Dan, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that too. Um, this also goes, I know there was another comment just in case I miss it. Um, about doing collaboration with people like Corporal's Corner or something. I tell Sean all the time, let's do a collab. He doesn't want to do anything. Thanks, Sean. Then we were supposed to do an arm wrestling contest, chickened out, because he knows I would absolutely crush him. He doesn't lift weights, he has a terrible diet, and his body looks ter terrible. I was gonna say some bad stuff, but I can't. I like you, Sean. I'm just kidding with you. Now, somebody just stroked out this branch. Let's do a collab, Sean. Let's do it. I have the forest podium. You can come and talk on this. Rant and rave. So, I, would it be an arm wrestling? You want to see me rip Dan's arm off. That's where I'm at with that comment. Because you know I will. A lot of comments also about throat punching Dan, arm wrestling him, beating him up. It's like a, a trend. And I think everybody wants to see it happen at some point. Maybe we should set a wrestling ring up in the woods and I murder him. I don't like you, but my dog does. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's great. All right, Robert. Maybe I already covered this in a video, but can you tell us more about your yurt? So that yurt was made from American yurts, which unfortunately the owner passed away two, a year and a half ago maybe. So uh, the company's no longer in business. Yurts are expensive. Um, I feel like American yurts had the most reasonably priced yurts. The customer service used to be great. It was awesome. So uh, that yurt itself is, and it's right next to me, that's why I'm looking in that direction. 13 foot, I'll give you a quick tour of it. When I got this thing, it was um, like a real light gray color and I hated it. It just, it looked horrible in the woods. So I painted it. So I had a net over it, like one of those camo nets and then we painted it. And now I just paint it every year, year and a half, power wash it and paint it. And it seems to really hold up really well. All the wood lattice and stuff inside I have, uh, use like a Thompson's water seal on and a lacquer and we just keep that all maintained and it holds up really, really well. We did have some breakage on this side because there was like a four foot snowstorm came through. So four foot of snow just fell all at once. Crushed that one side um, and then we did get a fix. That's shortly after when the owner passed away. If you look at the top, there's like that little roof cap thing. That's a special thing to keep water out of my stove pipe. I know the stove set up right now because it's not cold enough, but uh, that's why that's on there. So let's look inside. So I change up the inside of the yurt all the time. We have on the floor, just some good old stone which uh, works really well. You don't have to worry if it gets wet or if your feet are muddy, you're not getting anything messed up. You see the lattice walls. We have a big table in the back, bunk on this side, bunk on that side. So we have a pretty nice setup in here. Um, we just keep old kind of stuff in here. We have the two cots, of course, but just old cookware and stuff like that, a couple saws and we're good. Normally stove right in the middle and we're happy campers. 816 hours of filming, 51 days, 16 hours, 10 episodes, assuming you were shown 10 minutes per episode. Maybe I'm drunk. Thanks for doing the math, Eric. You could have went on with that. I feel like you got hung up because you were drunk on maybe I'm drunk in parentheses and didn't finish your thought because that was going somewhere. I could tell by the intensity of the 
question written. Can you ride in on a mini bike for the intro of the next Q&A? I love these. Riverbent Longbow Outdoors. I'm here already. I didn't bring the mini bike. I didn't see this comment until just now. The whole video is ruined. I still make the enchilada soup from your recipe and let the sapling huggers find a shelter in emergency. Good luck to them. I'd like to see more bushcraft recipes. Um, now that it's cooler out, it's not bad sitting by a fire. I do love to cook out here, so I think that that should definitely be on the menu. Get the little pun, put it on the menu, food. What qualifies is a dumb question. Assuming this qualifies, how long will I be banned for? <laughs> All right, Jim, you are officially banned. Block the Lee. I'm just kidding. I don't usually comment, Joe Lee, but you're the only bushcrafter that seems like himself. Well, I am, Dan. I just marched to the beat of my own drum. Do you and Bigfoot share the same toilet in the woods? Serious question. Seriously, we're gonna answer that in another video. Are you gonna open a shop here in PA anytime soon? I always think yes. The only problem with opening a shop, because we did move from that like rental unit house to a warehouse unit, which is awesome. We're not totally moved in there yet. It's not totally developed yet. I would say yes, but the problem, getting back to the problem, is then like I need somebody there all the time, because sometimes I'm not there. I'm not there all the time anyway, but if people go in and pack orders, there's, I, a lot of stuff going on there. Maybe in the future. Why didn't you answer the question that I didn't post? All right, Carrie. Question's answered. You're a dummy. Kidding. Can I get two questions? No. I'm gonna answer the first one and the second one I'm gonna ignore. When you were shooting videos with Townsends, were you wearing period breeches or common pants? Um, if I can remember correctly, they were period britches. Like the flap front, I don't even remember what they're called off the top of my head. I'm drawing a blank. But yeah, I did have those on. Um, I had leggings on though, like buckskin traditional leggings. So they are like a higher cut. So that's why, because then my hunting schmock is long. So that's how that goes. I'm gonna answer the second part of your question, because do I like metal? Do you mean metal like knives or metal like heavy metal? Like, I like Devil Driver at the gym. I do rock out the Devil Driver. I don't mind heavy metal music. So yes, I would say yes, I do. I don't listen to it 24 hours a day, but it is probably one of the things I listen to more so than anything else. Just thinking about things and talking at the same time. Eric Johnson, damn it, now I have to get a new knife with white liners. Only if you're master level, only. You can't have it otherwise. Actually, if you contact a knife maker, I looked into this, you contact knife maker, you want white liners, you gotta send a certificate. You gotta send a certificate and at your master level. What are some of your favorite things about teaching bushcraft? So, I would say that probably my most favorite teaching moment is when I'm teaching somebody something that they don't know and it's the aha moment. You can see that they got it, that they just learned something new that they're gonna take with them and carry along and probably share with somebody else because you can just tell by their character, their emotion of when they learn that, that that was awesome to them and that they wanna share that knowledge on. So when that happens and I'm there with somebody and that goes, it's the best. Kids, you get that way more than adults, but I would say there's a good majority of time with adults, you get that reaction at least a couple times throughout the class. It's awesome. You got the date and the title wrong. Just saying, that is all. <laughs> all right, Nick, Tant. Nick Tant, this is two weeks in a row, Nick. Enough with the questions, you're hogging the questions from everybody else. But yes, I guess I did get the date wrong. And every, everything else I wrote that day that I put the date on, wrong. I'm a super high level ninja expert s'more eater. Can I be an instructor? Oh, in, in that case, yes. As long as you have fast fingers on a keyboard and you make rude comments to everybody on YouTube. For the guy looking for land to bushcraft on, try offering work in trade. That's a great idea. So go to the landowner. Hey, I'll do all this work for you. Can I use a little section of your land to set up a camp? They're probably gonna say yes. What do you think about bow saws and buck saws? Strange you say. Has anybody seen this yet? We make these. Look at these. They're takedown buck saws. Absolutely beautiful. This one is in birch. We don't always make birch, but we make red oak, we make cherry. They normally sell out really quick when we put them up. So, uh, you should probably get yours now at coalcrackerbushcraft.com.
Now, the reason I'm showing that is because I do like a buck saw and I have no problem with a bow saw. And I, somewhere recently, I just saw comments about lose the bow saw loser. You should get a silky katana or whatever those big silky saws are. I've used them. I just, it's way easier for me to just put a bow saw at my yurt or a buck saw somewhere. Not that there's anything wrong with those silky saws. Bow saws, great. You could buy them super cheap, you could get replacement blades, good to go. I mean, you don't have a lot of money in them. These a little bit more expensive because they're handmade, all nice, beautiful. I brought this one out specifically just for the video because I knew somebody asked this question. Best regards from Germany. Rock on, Germany. Du, du hast mich. Isn't that, I don't even know what that means. That might be the worst thing I could have said on video. That's a song. Is that German? Maybe it's not even German. If it is, leave in the comments below. Dan's on crack? Nope, Fern's on Dan's crack. Yep. <laughs> no, I do wipe my butt with ferns all the time, so that's a good one. Hammocks, what are your take on them? I love a hammock, especially in the summertime. Oh, it is so nice to sleep in one. I always thought my Eno hammock was good. Like, I was like, this is so comfortable. Then I got a Dutchware Chameleon. It is like a Ferrari. That thing is unbelievable. Then I got all the accessories. I got an underquilt, overquilt. Life-changing. Now, here's what I will say. It packs down super nice, light, small, if you get all like the, the good stuff. Okay, not big bulky stuff. But uh, hammock camping is definitely awesome. I should do a video on all my gear because over the last year, I definitely got more educated on that. So uh, I give two thumbs up to hammock camping. I think it's pretty awesome. How tall are you? I'm 5'9". 6'2"? I'm, I'm not saying that as I don't know. I'm 6'2". I'm like, what is the context of that question? And to say that, I made this, this podium, which now is a perfect height. It is not. My legs are so spread open, my hip joints hurt. Look at this nonsense. You just can't have anything nice. You can't have anything nice. Just read some of the comments. Wow, get out of the basement and drop the Hot Pockets, kids. <laughs> Mom, Mom, are my Hot Pockets and Bagel Bites done? Please answer this, all capitals, question mark. Is there an actual US certifying body or national certification board for becoming a bushcraft slash wilderness survival instructor? No. So that's where, at the end of the day, you need to make a good decision on what you think and who you think is knowledgeable enough in giving good information. I will be honest that sometimes I'll watch videos and I literally cringe because I look at this, especially at our survival level classes, as you're giving skill sets the same as first aid. They can be life-saving at some point. If you're giving bad skill sets and you're giving bad information, you can get somebody killed. And now that's 100% serious how I feel about that. I think another problem is also is when you're looking for a training place, somewhere that you maybe are going to go and train. You need to look at the circumstances that you're going to get put through and is it realistic to survival or is it realistic to military training or is it realistic to just trying to grind away and see if you have the mental fortitude and physical fortitude to hang in there. But you as a person need to decide on, on what application is going to fit you best. Some people just don't have the physicality to be able to go and put themselves through the paces of needing to walk a thousand miles and do that. And that is not always the best survival protocol. Now I'm going on a rant about this just for the simple fact I want people to make good educated decisions when they're going out. So again, jump back to maybe physically you cannot go and walk 30 miles in a three day period. So if you can't do that, that doesn't mean you shouldn't go in the woods or get a skill set. Your skill set, if you are lost, should probably be to stay put where you're at. If you have a good plan in place, people are most likely gonna come out and try to find you. So walking a ton of miles to go where, when if you are truly lost, okay, maybe it's better to just stay put because you're probably not that lost. Okay, so there's a lot of different factors to come in there. So I'm done ranting. But if you are going to either teach skills or put skills out there or go get training, you need to find somebody reputable that you feel, or maybe other people left reviews on, give good training, okay? And what is that training specific to? Is it beating you up? Is it just giving you information? Is it hands-on practicals? Like, what is it? And then decide from there. Rant over. I ranted so long my phone turned off, okay.
I like it way easier. I have the paper which is laying here that I'm not going to forget that a sea turtle eats. Um, so I am going to pick that up, but it's just way easier on my phone. I just scroll through. Then what I usually do is I go like this. I give it a flick every so often. So if I miss your question, I apologize. What do you think about ultralight? Yo, what's up? Just hiking. What's on your back? I got a sleep pad, tarp, and whatever else I need. Ultralight. Ultralight? I'm ultralight. Ultralight's my wheelhouse. Uh, um, okay. Now, all kidding aside, I've been doing a lot of research and reading and talking to people about ultralight gear. But what I have found is ultralight, true hardcore ultralighters, okay, are the same as a hardcore bushcrafters or hardcore survivalists. There's this pocket of them. And then there's the people who just, in general, think it's a good idea. And I do think it's a good idea to lighten up your load in some senses. In other senses, if you're coming to a camp and you really want to enjoy yourself, you don't have to go bare minimum. Are you hiking or are you camping? And I just had this discussion last night via text with one of my friends, Chad. Are you hiking or are you camping? If you're camping, take some extra gear and what does it matter? If you're trying to put a lot of miles in and you're specifically hiking, then you might want to be a little bit lighter. But the second thing I also realized about this is that if you are obsessed over three or four ounces, okay, which I get, take a look at yourself because I'm gonna say that if you have a huge effect on that and you're not physically fit and you have a big beer belly or you're extremely overweight, that weight is way more important to lose than cut an extra two ounces off your sleeping bag. So I put it out there. So just go with that, okay? Lose the gut or lose the fat. You don't have to be super shredded or like some extreme fitness person, but if you just take care of yourself that you're on the leaner side and you're fit, okay? And then you go ultralight, you've got something going on. But if you just need to go ultralight because you're fat and you just can't walk, and you think that the lighter gear is gonna help, you have some other things that you should address first. Oh, Nick, now Nick can't get another, Nick, lay off the questions. And what's, in your opinion, what's the best way to do joinery for bushcraft without lashing? So joinery without lashing, you're gonna to need to carry some kind of auger bit, um, a scotch eye auger or an auger bit. Just drill it and peg it. And that is what I have found has been best. Put a small fan off the side of your face to keep the bugs off your yo face. I'm ultralight. I cannot carry a fan and batteries. I'm sorry. All right, and I think that's gonna be about it for this episode. So I hope you enjoyed everything that we went over from 151 to buck saws to just having a big gut and trying to be ultralight. All of those things probably offended people and that's okay. Everybody else, thanks for joining. Leave in the comments below questions for next week. I got something really good planned. It has to do with a mini bike. I'm not gonna tell you anymore, but I think, I better not even, I'll let that in, that it has to do with a mini bike and I'll make it happen. All right, till next video, peace. That's devil horns, right? All right, um, bushcraft the uh, podium. Ow.